Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Re Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We'll be starting things out with AMD's response to RX Vegas pricing, specifically that, of course, the cards are going to be considerably higher than the uh, recommended price that AMD have set. And then we're going to move over to Intel and benchmarks the 8700K, which represents the first six core mainstream processor from the company. But first things first, Vega. So there are a couple of cards that most folks are interested in in the Vega lineup. We're not going to discuss the liquid just for a moment. We're going to focus on the air-cooled variants. And they would be the air-cooled 64, which is going to retail at 500 US dollars. And the RX Vega 56, which is retailing at 400 US dollars, rounding it down ever so slightly. The reason we're not going to bring in the liquid cooled uh, variant, of course, is because that's part of the Aqua Pack, which is 700 US dollars, because obviously you get all those all of those coupon codes and other bits and bobs with it too. However, various retailers have started to list the Vega cards. One of the biggest is Fry's Electronics. In fact, they listed the RX Vega 64 8GB model at $600. US Now, this is not exactly cheap. It's within spitting distance, coming up to close anyway, to the GTX 1080 Ti cards. And is around $100 US more expensive than the MSRP. And they're not the only ones. Several other retailers have also been caught doing much the same. But does that mean that AMD are sneakily raising the price for the card? No, it just appears that, well, I'm going to guess it's a couple of scenarios, but we'll go into those in just a moment. AMD have actually reached out to Fudzilla and a couple of other websites too. And they've essentially confirmed that a couple of websites, Newegg and Amazon, will have Vega 64 for the regular retail price of 499 US dollars. So in other words, the pricing that was announced at launch. So there's a couple of things going on here. One is that retailers are just expecting there's going to be short supply and so they're just gouging as they feel is appropriate. Two, they just have uh, placeholder pricing, which is a bit weird considering that, well, AMD announced these cards, so you'd be kind of surprised for them to actually put this placeholder pricing in. Or three, it's probably mining, and they suspect that these cards are going to be snapped up regardless by uh, hardcore miners, and therefore they can get away with charging like 100 or $200 extra and basically pocketing the price uh, difference as, well, cash. This does put you in a kind of weird position if you want to go ahead and buy Vega. Um, just as a quick reminder from yesterday, AMD are asking uh, reviewers to prioritize the Vega 56, which shows up about two weeks after the launch of the 64. So, in other words, because of that, in theory, obviously we don't know, but because reviews do take mm, between five to seven days generally, obviously it does depend on the reviewer, how fast you got the card, whether that's your only product. For example, if you're finishing off another review, then you might think, well, I've got six days or whatever to finish this review. If I just finish this one today, let's say they were reviewing, I don't know, Fred Ripper. And so they had another product that they were working on and then they needed to jump onto Vega. But then AMD asked them to reprioritize. So they started on the 64. A couple of days later, AMD asked them to switch that to the 56. You see where I'm going with this. And logically, as a reviewer, you would prioritize the card which people are going to be able to purchase first, which, of course, with the 64. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up to you is because it's possible we may have few RX Vega 64 reviews available, or they may be rushed, or they may just have not as many benchmarks. And so because of that, you may have to essentially decide to buy the card with a lot less information than what would be ideal. So, you know, as usual, just be pretty careful spending your money. And obviously, if you're a miner, and I know that some people are going to hate this, but hey, some people want to mine, that's their gig. You know, I'm not going to judge them for it. And if, of course, you are buying the card for mining, it would still be prudent to double check that those figures that we've heard that it's like, you know, 70 to 100 hash rate are actually accurate. Anyway, um, let's move over now to the i7 8700K. So this card, uh, this processor, not card, represents Intel's first mainstream six core processor. Of course, we've seen them before in higher end device, or higher end platforms rather, not devices, but Finally, we are moving away from the quad cores. 
So this uh, 8700K, as we all know, has six cores, 12 threads, and it looks kind of monstrous. But what's rather interesting is we have a couple of results on 3D Mark. Oh, and I'd also like to thank Chris for the links to the 3D Mark. Uh, website with these two entries. So thanks very much to him. He messaged me on Facebook. So once again, thanks very much to Chris. Um, I knew I was forgetting something. Anyway, so what we have, first of all, is confirmation that the result, I'm sorry, that the processes are pretty much what the leaks had been leading us to believe. Not too surprising. Um, I'm not noticing anything out of the ordinary here, apart from the fact that it's tested on a super micro, super O, C, L, Z, 370-CG-L motherboard. That is not an easy name to remember, is it, really? Uh, this essentially is a good indicator that we're going to see follow-up SKUs for the Z... Uh, for, sorry, for the 300 platform in the first quarter. But anyway, they were tested on a couple of different GPUs, obviously, just to see what scaling's like, that type of thing. One is an RX 480, and the other one is a GTX 1080. Ironically, these are two cards that I've actually got sitting in my own rigs right now. Uh, it looks like the results are a good indicator that we're indeed going to see improved performance. The physics score is hitting around the... 14,200 range, which isn't surprising. It's the same on both systems because essentially uh, physics, for those who don't know, isn't physics being ran on the GPU. It's physics on the CPU. Therefore, it's stressing multiple cores. And logically, we're looking at results of a couple of thousand higher than a typical 7700K. Obviously, a lot of this does, of course, depend upon things such as memory timings, clock speeds, and that type of thing. But it's looking like a really nice processor. For gamers, I wouldn't be surprised if the CPU turns out to be a really good option. Obviously, we're going to have to wait and see how it compares to like a Ryzen 7 1700, particularly on pricing, as that's the other big deal, isn't it, really? What about pricing? And we can probably assume it's going to slot into Intel's rough pricing of like the 7700K or 6700K before it. Don't forget that there has also been CPU Z benchmarks that were leaked out just a short while ago, also for this processor. For those who don't remember, we were looking at 2323 for the single thread performance, whereas the um, multi thread performance is around 13,980. For point of reference, I actually have a CPU Z graph that I was actually uh, using for other benchmarks, and I can tell you that at 7600K, obviously it does depend upon the rest of the system, but in our results, we got a 7600K, 70, 70, excuse me, at uh, 8285 for multi thread, single thread, uh, 2132. Uh, the 7700K, which of course is the better example, is 9535 for the multi-thread performance, whereas single thread is 2235. So really this is more akin to something like a 1600 or a 1600X, which scores the uh, 14,500 range for multi-thread performance. So it does look like a very impressive processor to say the least. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, subscribe. There's a lot of stuff coming up over the next couple of days. I've actually finished the motherboard review, which we got sent by Biostar, so I'm pretty happy about that, actually. It's a really nice motherboard for the pricing. It costs around 75 to 85 US dollars. I'll tell you the model number right now, actually. It's the Biostar B350 uh, GT3, the racing model. It's really nice. Um, so that's going to be up over the next couple of days. Uh, I'm actually speaking with another uh, AIB partner. I can't reveal who yet. I have to do a Skype conversation with the chat on Monday or Tuesday whenever it's good for our schedules. And I'm really grateful for this one because it's quite a big vendor. So I'm so happy because, um, yeah, I just feel really happy about that because it it should mean that we're going to get quite a few extra samples as well. And that's fantastic. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm so, I don't know, I just feel uh, so grateful to everyone who's been like supporting the channel recently because it, you know, it, it, it's really down to you guys that, uh, you know, these guys, well, you know, these vendors are actually willing to talk to us. So I'm, I'm really, I'm just like super excited about that. Uh, there's another graphics, I'm, I'm sorry, memory review is coming up as well. 
So it's going to be a busy couple of days. Things have just been slowed down. I know I've said this a couple of times previously, but things are just a bit slower than normal at the moment because Amy, as I said, has buggered off to a festival, but she'll be back Monday. So hopefully normal service will resume by then. Anyway, I've got some editing to do and hopefully relax a little bit tonight. So I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.